orange, orange in, uh, in navy here, and then we have Kutztown in white. So what do you make of this matchup? These are uh, uh, both solid teams from the respective divisions, but how, well, do, how do you say they'll stack up here? Kutztown University is one of the best sevens teams in the country. Wow. But, I mean, it, and, and they were earlier this year, and they didn't have their best player with them, and that was Tim Acker. Tim Acker is uh, now healthy, and uh, he's a big part of their their attack. He's he's a very good player. They're a very good team. They've got a lot of talent. There's Acker there. Well, fair enough. And certainly, early on, Kutztown looking dangerous, and they are going to score here off their first possession. And a really well-worked team try there. It certainly wasn't a, a one-man show. Um, and as no. you say, they seem to be working together quite well as a team early on. Uh, that, Acker got that started. Jamie Gregory was in there. Jamie Gregory plays hooker for their 15s team, but he's extremely mobile as a hooker. He uh, was smart enough to, to link up with Gareth Lawrence. Gareth Lawrence is the guy who finished it off. He's very quick. They have a lot of... Of talent on this. Now, Virginia is not a bad side at all. Virginia came second in the Atlantic Coast, and they came second by two points in a really dramatic uh, final with Virginia Tech. Uh, they've they've beaten Navy. They've beaten North Carolina State. They're good, and they they work the field very well. They have some good athletes, and I, I, I don't want to run them down at all. Kutztown is just much more polished. They've come very very close to winning some high honors. They just haven't quite got there. They're a little bit hungry uh, as a result. Ooh. And as you say, they, uh, Virginia not able to make much of their possession here. Uh, Kutztown already is able to turn that ball over, and boy, are they looking dangerous, although some, some hard scrabbling defense here from Virginia, but oh, it, it looks like Kutztown's going to put another one in under the post. Just some fine, fine stepping there. That's Tim Acker, and, and Tim Acker is, is possibly – the best sevens uh, collegiate player in the country. Uh, uh, we we picked Colton Carriaga of life, but we could have picked Tim Acker, and the only reason we didn't was because he'd been injured for a good part of the fall. He is excellent, and uh, there's a dummy and a sidestep. It, it, it's, the, it's sort of like the holy trinity, right? The, the, the dummy, the sidestep, you've created the gap, and then you've got to take it with acceleration. So dummy, sidestep, acceleration. Well, in sevens rugby, obviously, there's seven players on a full side a full-size field here, very important to make those one-on-one -on -one tackles. So a player like Tim Acker who can, can make people miss, very, very dangerous, aren't they, Alex? Yeah, exactly. You, you make one person miss. The, the amount of real estate that you have available to you is just uh, enormous. And certainly Kutztown making Virginia pay early on with a couple of scores here, and they are looking like doing it again. A bit of space here on the outside, and boy... It looks like he's going to go in, and he's able to center this thing up. Very important to center up the ball in sevens. Um, obviously, the kick is converted via a drop kick, which is a much more difficult way to score, wouldn't you say, Alex? So yes. getting these scores where they're actually able to center it up, it, it can be the difference maker in a sevens game uh, between two sides on who makes those conversions and who doesn't. Yeah, the, these uh, you know, being someone who played on sevens teams only because I could drop kick. Uh, the, the drop kick conversion is difficult to do, and it is important to be able to do it. So, yeah, you, if, if you can, to make the effort to center it because that will almost guarantee you getting your two points. And we talked about you know, within the game, obviously, the points matter, and also within the, the tournament. That's Andrew Stinson who actually kicks off, and he's the one who scored the try. Um, and... and Kutztown has basically taken control of this game very early, and to the point that Virginia really hasn't even touched the ball. I think they can score. I think they have the ability to score. We just haven't seen them with the ball. And Kutztown certainly very aggressive in the contact area, nearly turned the ball over there. A little bit of space on the outside, but just oh. going into touch. Number 10, Duke McKenna, shepherding the number 10 Virginia player, Jordan Morris, out of touch. And, uh, oh, don't you see this in seven sometimes? You see that bit of space on the outside outside, and you think immediate score, but not always the case in sevens, is it? Well, he telegraphed it. No one Sperling had a little uh, loop play uh, going on there with Jordan Morris, and, the, and uh, everybody knew that was coming. Well, here we are, Kutztown running in hard again. Looks like we're going to see a score here in the corner from number seven, Gareth Lawrence. And 
boy, Kutztown just really, um, really running roughshod right now over Virginia. Um, as you say, clearly one of the most dominant teams coming into this tournament, and they're showing it early, aren't they? They they catch and pass very quickly, and I think that uh, you know if. If you're new to the game, if you're are learning the game, and you, your your coaches will will tell you to do this, and they, you know arrange your body correctly and get your hands out in front, and what they want you to do is catch that ball, and as you transfer it across your body, immediately flick it over to the next next player. That's what they're doing, and because that's going so fast, and again, just like just like a, a fast break in, uh, in in basketball, where if the ball is moved quickly. That makes the scoring opportunity that much easier. That's exactly what they're doing. So it's just it's just good execution, and they're well coached. Well, David McKenna kicking off here for Kutztown. Nice high ball, but Virginia able to take it. And they are trying this outside out. They are looking for points, oh, but dear. Kutztown, oh, nice intercept there from number nine, Robert Stortz. Going in for another score. Uh, Again, Virginia, boy, they, they seem like they're trying here, but but could sound just putting them under pressure yeah. all over the show and, and and really making them pay for those tiny tiny indiscretions in their passing. Well, I, I think I think there's a little bit of doubt in uh, Virginia's play there. So so everything that they've been training, there's just a little bit extra look, a little bit extra hesitation to do what they need to do. So again, this one was telegraphed. The pass inside, he faked it. And he didn't look anywhere else. He didn't do anything else. He did exactly that thing next. And so Stortz saw it, put his hand up, popped it up in the air. Again, it's, that's not a knock-on because he caught it. If it had hit the ground, it would have been a knock-on. It might even have been called by uh, referee Varnell uh, a, a, a deliberate knock-on. But it was just it was good. Got it. Caught it. He's in. Well, the conversion is no good from number 12, Tim Acker. But, uh, nice endeavor there. Nice high kickoff once again. Virginia able to take the ball as it went too deep for Kutztown to put too much pressure on there. Spinning the ball widely for Virginia. and found a bit of a gap, but Kutztown's defense there to to snuff the play out. Oh, well, Kutztown oh, charging early over there. Owen Sperling needs to take ownership of that, that attacking opportunity. He's got to go. And he didn't. He sort of skates around. He's waiting for support. Again, there's a little bit of doubt creeping in his mind as to whether his support is there or whether he really should go. He just needs to go. Well, Virginia taking the quick penalty tap, nice. trying it out here on the outside, just breaking clear. Oh, and the ball just not going to hand, but the referee's going to let it play on. Well, now, Virginia yeah. looking dangerous here. Best move they made all day. And let's see. Some strong, strong tackling. Very, very physical. But Virginia, oh, there's a knock call on. dead. There was a little bit of a knock on. The referee was unsighted and uh, called it, but that'll be the end of the half. But it, finally we see Virginia go for something, and, and it, just a little bit the, the pass didn't go to hand. And one of the other things we're going to see today in the tournament is the timing of passing. So if you, if you have somebody who's on a break and he's got a, a tackler, uh, coming up to get him, you've got that split second, really about a second to figure out where you pass. If you pass too early, the tackler can adjust and go get him, uh, get your support. But if you if you wait too late, then you're hit. And most of these players have been playing in tournaments where they, they're all successful teams. So they've been playing in tournaments where generally, even if they get hit, they're able to make the offload. Every tackle here is going to be one of the harder tackles they normally feel. So if they hit as they're passing, more often than not, it's going to be a bad pass, drop ball, something like that. So they got to pass just before contact is the key. And that didn't happen, and that's why that didn't morph its way into a try. Well, Kutztown certainly more dominant in the tackle area. Um, as you see there, they, they've been driving Virginia back in that tackle situation seems to have disrupted Virginia a little bit here. So what would you say Virginia needs to do here, given how dominant that tackling is? Is it simply getting the ball off earlier in contact uh, before they go into the contact or maybe adjust their body positioning so they're able to get that fluidity back to their play that they need to, to put some points on the board against Kutztown? Well, I think it's a good question because you know, what are they supposed to do? I mean, we're talking about taking, taking uh, a chance. We're talking about going vertical a little bit, and if they do that, that means that they will go into contact at po at some point. the The point is, let's go into contact five ten meters down the field rather than go into contact now. Once you make a break, once you break through the line, and you have to engage tacklers to break through the line, 
that's when you start thinking about moving the ball before contact. But let's see if Virginia can put that into action here. Play going back, but Kutztown collecting their own kickoff, and they are looking dangerous early. Ball to hand here. Just chopped down, but a powerful run. Kutztown putting, heaping that pressure on early. Oh, ball just a, just a pass a little bit too high there. Most likely a knock on. The referee has called it. Going to have a scrum down to Virginia. That uh, degenerated into a game of Gaelic football there for a second. It was just <laughs> a little bit crazy. Uh, uh, and um, what, we've, what we've seen in the first half is that Kutztown has executed well. And they started out, that's fine. Then they start bobbling the ball a little bit. Don't get too cute. Let's execute. Well, Virginia scrumming strongly, but maybe Kutztown let them do that to try to put some pressure on that ball. And let's see here. Ball again, very, very sloppy, getting hacked on. Taking out of touch. Virginia opting for a quick line out, and the referee's going to let them play on. No issue there. Kutztown player knocking it back. Boy, this is a bit like fast break basketball here. Number sure nine is. looking, Robert Stortz putting it in and able to center it up once again. Should be a nice, easy conversion. Good sound, just punishing those mistakes from Virginia. Things that may not normally get uh, get exploited quite so heavily. Just some uh, passing well, not quite going to hand, but Kutztown making a pay for those yeah. little indiscretions. <laughs> well, uh, Stortz has got some acceleration, doesn't he? You know, he grabs the ball. He's gone. And uh, uh, that's uh, very impressive. But, you know, if, if, if you worry about the offside line and you start saying, well, how did they get it there? You know, this people watching might think that Kutztown was offside in that because the – the ball was uh, was passed back by Virginia, and there was a Kutztown player there in the middle of it. But this is open play. This is not where there's a ruck and they've established an offside line. Once the ball is out, there's no offside line. You can go hang out in the uh, the other team's line and 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 intercept those balls. So that's that's what they're doing there in, in open play. Virginia is not really taking care of the ball. They're sort of pa they're passing first and, and and looking later. Well, cuts down once again, showing their dominance in the set pieces, recollecting their own kickoff once again, and then receiving a a penalty here, opting for the line out. Interesting choice. You don't often see line outs in sevens, not nearly to the frequency in fifteens, do you, Alex? No, no. Usually, it, when you do that, it's because you're pinned in your own end, and this is this is an attacking option. But look, they've got that height too. Number eight. Four yeah, cuts Lawrence down, Mike Lawrence, and it obviously quite a tall fellow. Um, certainly going to have a height advantage in these in these lineouts and sevens. And cuts down once again, just some powerful, quick running on the outside. Maybe a bit of poor defensive effort for Virginia yeah. there, and cuts down going in once again. This is uh, turning into a pretty lopsided affair. Well, they can see the scoreboard, and, and it's it's kind of tough to to really sell yourself out to make a tackle. When uh, you're down by 40 points, uh, they're falling off the tackles now. Uh, Virginia is a good team that's run into a very, very good team. It's, it's, it can be discouraging. They need to pick themselves up right now and realize that uh, they still have three minutes to play. That's enough time to score four tries. Absolutely. Now, how do you see that we'll have substitutions here? I have to imagine Kutztown, it's a long day. It's a You have a couple of days of a lot of rugby to play here. Do you think we're going to see a lot of substitutions come on and maybe ride this thing out a little bit? I think we've seen a couple, and I think uh, we probably will. The, the sub rules are now the new modern IRB sub rules, which means you have five people on the bench, and they can be used at any time. Uh, but, again, there's that whole question about points difference. What happens with uh, um you know, if, if you sub on a bunch of people and you start to give up a couple of tries, then then your points difference suffers because of that. Well, Virginia here trying to make something happen. Ball and handling just not letting him down a little bit. We've got a penalty not releasing. That, that goes to a little bit of confusion there from Virginia. Oh, heavens. Okay, so it's, It looked yeah. initially like he had signaled for Kutztown, but apparently that is a full-arm penalty to Virginia. Taking the ball, looking to run this thing out, put some points on the board. Not much good kicking is going to do you now. you got you to get those points out. No, you've got to run. And they are doing it here. Nice little break. 
But again, handling seems to be the story of the day for Virginia here. Some nice things happening, uh, but ultimately just not able to get that pass to hand and, and things falling apart for Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd credit the Kutztown defense more than anything else uh, on that. Uh, we, we do have a couple of results uh, just to remind you of. First of all, earlier on today, uh, Life beat Northeastern 31-7. Cal beat Middlebury 29-0. Wisconsin 26-12 over Colorado State. Arkansas State 29-5 over North Carolina State. Central Washington 19-0 over Texas. And for me, a big surprise, Navy beat Dartmouth 21-10. Uh, and over on field two right now, Cal Poly leads Air Force. That's a heck of a game, 10-5. And coming up next on uh, this field will be St. Mary's against the Vikings of Western Washington. And on field two, after uh, the Cal Poly... Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I misread that. That'll be uh, uh, a game a little bit later. It's Texas A&M against Bowling Green. So the home team, Texas A&M Aggies against the Bowling Green Falcons. And then uh, after Cal Poly Air Force on field two, we will see San Diego State against Lindenwood. That will be very interesting. San Diego State's uh, head coach, Matt Hawkins, is actually with the USA 7s team in Dubai. Uh, USA 7s team... Uh, 0-3 oh, today. Unfortunate. They they played very well, uh, very close against Australia and against France, um, but weren't able to pull out wins and then lost to Canada as well. Well, back on field one, Kutztown puts in another one under the post. And this game seems completely out of hand for Virginia at this point. Just 35 seconds left on the clock. Well, that was, uh, I believe that's Jamie Gregory uh, scoring that one. And... Uh, you know, he sort of hobbled up a little bit. And, I, and, and if I'm a, a, a coach here, I'm just a little bit worried now. Uh, when you, when you, you're winning by 50 and you leave your, your top players on the field, which you have to do in certain uh, situations, uh, and then you start thinking, boy, I just hope nobody gets injured in a game where you're winning 50 to nothing. Well, it does seem a curious decision, as you mentioned earlier. Able to use five substitutions, and in a game of sevens, that's nearly your whole team, obviously. That's true. So, given the point differential here, a bit of a surprise maybe that so many starters have uh, have made it through this when you're up 50 points, especially given all the rugby that is to be played. Maybe a little bit surprising they didn't put in some uh, uh, some other uh, players to get them some game experience and, and preserve those starters. I think they're concerned about the Central Washington game. And if they lose against Central Washington, then they're second, so they've got to have that points difference. Good point. As we said earlier, the point differential can become quite a big thing as we're looking for the difference it between will, first and second. So put those points on be. if you can get them, right? Exactly. They'll be looking at the scores. They'll be looking at the fact that uh, Central Washington won 19 to nothing. And Central Washington will be wondering about that too and said, should we have won better? You know, do we, we, uh, The Wildcats had more ball and should have scored. Uh, Kutztown has scored virtually every time they've gotten the ball, and half the time Virginia has gotten the ball. We have seen some heavy tackling here from Kutztown. And as we said earlier, their defensive effort, they, they really seem to be attacking on defense. That seems yes. like somewhat of an odd thing to say, but they really are putting that offense under pressure, just attacking that tackle area and those ruck areas so that really nullifying a lot of what Virginia is hoping to do and killing their continuity, aren't they? Oh, certainly. They, they want turnover ball. They want that ball back. And, uh, and they're thinking try on their defense. Well, that looks like that's going to be the end of the match. And what ended up being a fairly one-sided affair, Virginia, like you say, an excellent team in their own right. But Kutztown play? just uh, coming out and putting on an absolute dominant display. What, you know, they got in Virginia's heads really, really early. So that once Virginia got the ball, you could see that they had some moves that they wanted to play. They wanted to run a loop. Uh, uh, around the outside. They wanted to run a play where they go out to the outside and put it back in. But each time they were telegraphing they were, those moves, they're standing there and saying, here, here, here. So when it happened, everybody knew it was going to happen. And and so the defense was able to adjust. The fans knew. It's a nice big crowd. They all knew it was going to happen too. So th in the end, even when they had a good attacking situation, they weren't able to make it happen. But you saw Kutztown they're fast, they're physical, their big guys are fast, their little guys are physical, they have uh, tremendous acceleration, uh, uh, Stortz and Acker and, and even Gregory, who's a, who plays, like I said, plays hooker at 15s, mm -hmm. but they get the ball immediately, they see gap, and they go. Yeah, in, in Sevens defense, you can tell there's a lot of noose on that Kutztown team. In Sevens, obviously, you tend to have more of a bend, don't 